It is a beautiful, sunny Friday here in Melbourne, and what better way to close out the week than with this Range Rover Sport. We're gonna be taking that factory Bosch system out and replacing it with our 10.25 inch Android display. This display runs Apple CarPlay, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, retains all of the genuine features, runs YouTube, Netflix, Android 12, it is packed with features and we're gonna go through the whole install today. We usually work on Range Rovers like this. This is the first Range Rover that I've actually seen that is used. He's got all terrain tires on it. You can see over there, he has the caravan camera as well. So this Range Rover is actually used to go off-road and tow and all that sort of stuff and we love to see it. What we're doing today, we'll work on a bunch of Range Rovers depending on the year, it might be slightly different, but basically as long as your interior looks the same as this, it's gonna work. If it looks a little bit different, just jump over to here, fill out the contact form, and you can reach out to us, send us a photo of your dash, and we can work out what the system is, what it needs, what solutions there are, all that sort of stuff. But for today, 2016 Bosch system, Range Rover Sport, 10.25 inch, let's go. All right, quick look inside the box. First thing that you're gonna get is the screen itself. And you'll see the front part of the screen here has all of these clips. That is for the factory leather panel that goes around the screen that just clips right into this brand new screen slash panel. And then at the very back here, you'll see there's a lot of room inside this little casing here. So you actually need to take this casing off, take the original casing off of the original screen when you get the screen out, and you need to transport the circuit board over to here. So we'll run through that quickly when we do uh, the DIY on this, on this job, but that is something that you have to do, so keep that in mind. That might be something you may not be comfortable doing. Another side note for these brand new Android 12 units that we have, we've added a SIM card slot to it so you can have full-time 4G, 5G data straight to the unit. Moving on, we have our brand new fascia panel. So the beauty panel that goes around the factory screen it has, it's like a gray with a chrome trim around it. You're gonna take the original chrome trim out, replace that gray panel with this one here because we now have a bigger screen and then put the original chrome panel back in. So that's another annoying sort of part of this job because that's, that's pretty full on to do. But in the end, it does look really, really nice. It's a, it's a beautiful gloss black. And other than that, we've got ribbon cables that you're gonna need to use, some heat sinking stuff here as well and some screws. That's all for the circuit board that you're gonna do, or that we're gonna do. In here, you'll have GPS antenna, microphone, Wi-Fi antenna, all that stuff. I get a lot of questions, do you have to install these? The answer is yes. Okay, if it comes in the kit, install it. That's the best way to go. On a side note, all of our kits come with this speaker, okay? So anybody who ever sees this speaker, this is what you do with it. <laughs> Chuck it out, you don't need it. So that's an overview of the install, pretty straightforward. The only hard part is going to be that circuit board and the chrome slash gloss black trim panel, but we will go through that and I'll show you how to do it. What we need to do now is jump in the car and start pulling it apart. Guys, genius here forgot to record the first clip. And the first clip is just the first panel, which is very easy to get off. So I'm sure you could find plenty of how-tos on getting that off, but I do want to show you. So what I'm going to do is do a voiceover on this clip right here. And that'll be the only part that's a voiceover. And then we'll get back into the video. So basically what you'll see here is me putting this panel back on. And you can see I'm starting from the very bottom, lining the clips up, right? Pushing up and then in. So the clips are at the very bottom and also along the whole, you know, inside of the panel as well. So you wanna go up from the bottom and then on. And now just imagine if we're pulling that panel off, we're gonna pull kind of where my left hand is there, pull back and then down. And that's how you get the original panel out. <laughs> and uh, we can keep going with the video. After that front panel comes out, we're gonna come straight to here. This little rubber piece comes off. There's two screws. They're usually two seven or eight mils. Uh, someone's had this out already because that is a Phillips head and that is a, it looks like a eight mil. Um, take that out and then all you need to do is really just get this panel out so that these silver trims come out and that will give us access to the front side silver trims. Okay, if that makes sense. So we're just taking that rear section out here to give us access to pull these up and out.
For this next part, you will need some precision screwdrivers. So I've got here T7, T8, T9, T10, that sort of thing. Uh, also a kit that has a whole bunch of different uh, bits in it. That's probably something that you would want. Basically, there's a whole bunch of screws here that we're gonna go ahead and take out. Okay, that's the first step. Once that's done, basically this part here, the original screen, you don't need anymore. You can just set that to the side. Same thing here, guys. We're going to go ahead, undo all of the torque bits that are in there, take this board out. Once this board is out, there is another board underneath it that you also have to get out. So there'll be two boards coming out of this. Let's get that done and see how it looks. Okay, so where we're at now, both of these circuit boards have been taken out. Okay, they're sitting on this bench. This is a wood bench, okay? Don't use a metal bench or anything like that. Use wood or cloth. This comes out with Phillips heads. There's four Phillips heads on it. Very carefully take it out, okay? Because there's antennas here. So yes, you can take those antennas off pretty easy to just leave them on, okay, and pull it out. And basically we're just transporting all that circuit board stuff into the new housing. Now it'll only go one way, okay, so don't force anything in. The way I've done it now, it doesn't fit, okay, so I'm gonna flip it 180. So that's how it fits. You'll see the antennas are coming out through here, and then you'll see one, two, three, four screws line up. So grab those same four that you took out from the original, pop them into place, and then this board will just sit on top. Boom, screw it in. You can use the original screws from the original circuit board and original screen. They will fit perfectly. Okay, second board is on now. Just push that right into place, and as you can see, everything is lining up nicely. So that housing is now nice and full. Same thing, put all the screws back in. Once you've got that screwed on, the next thing is the ribbon cable. Now be very careful with the ribbon cable. Basically what you wanna see is one side of the ribbon cable has blue. So I'll just pop this one up so you can see it. So the blue stays facing up, okay? And then you slide that into the little housing. Uh, the little tab just flicks up. Use your nail, be very careful, don't break it. Slide the ribbon cable in. Okay, make sure it's 100% straight and in. If you don't, something won't work and you'll have to rip it back out. So better to make sure it's dead straight. And same on this side, blue faces up. So you'll see some writing on this side, that side will be clear. And lastly, blue heat sinky, shrinky stuff goes on this heat sink here. Press it into place. Now this can go back on. And when you're finished, it should look something like that. And you've got a new screen ready to go. So what we can do now is head back to the car and this will be one of the last things that we put in. Once your screen is done, you can go ahead and move on to the next part, which is this panel right here. Uh, not the funnest thing to do, but also not the crazy hardest thing to do in the world. Basically, turn her over, and at the back, you're gonna see one, two, three, four, five, six, right? All of these little plastic welded tabs, and they hold this original panel into the leather piece. You need to either use uh, side cutters or pliers, something of that nature and twist and cut them off. Sometimes they're really, really on there and you need to use a soldering iron to melt them. It can be a bit time consuming. It is a little bit annoying, but you know, they do come out. And then what happens is this will pop off and I'll show you the next step after that. All right, so that is out now. Uh, pretty straightforward actually. This car was pretty good. I used vice grips and I'd grab that little top plastic that we had and just twist it off and they actually all came off really clean, as you might be able to see right there. Once they're all off, you can go ahead and pry that out. Just be careful because I slipped and cut myself on the plastic, so that will happen most likely if you slip, <laughs> you will cut yourself on the plastic. Once this panel is out, you can go ahead and use something like a small screwdriver and just go in and start releasing all these little tabs. Be careful, you don't want to scratch it or whatever, so just go nice and slow and get this ring separated from that panel there. Now we can go ahead and grab our brand new panel. We've got our new gloss black, beautiful looking panel. And we're just gonna pop this straight on. There you go. And she's on just like that. Probably the easiest part of this job, guys. Now, sit this in to your housing. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. All nicely, beautifully clipped in. And all we have to do now, the very last step on the back, is you have these 
clips here where the original ones were. I usually just get a soldering iron and just melt them a little bit to create a plastic weld. Okay, you can do super glue, you can do the plastic weld method, you can do whatever you like, but make sure you mount them because that will just fall out eventually if you don't. And when you're finished, it should look something like that. Beautiful, clean finish. Just needs to be cleaned up, but that's okay. And all of our little plastic welds are done on the inside there and she is ready to go. So coming back into the car, we need to get the CD changer out. To do that, you're gonna have one, two, three, four, eight mils. This little panel here will pop out and then you can go ahead and unscrew this, which will have a couple more Torx 20s behind it. And from there, you can do all your plug and play connections. All right, once that CD changes out, all you need to do is grab this plug here, plug it into the main one. Okay, so once that's plugged in, get it out of the way. You'll have another plug right here. That's gonna go up to the main screen. This stuff will go to the new screen. So just keep an eye on that. You have two USBs that you need to run. I'm gonna put them in the glove box in this car. They can go to the center console, but it's really hard to get them in there. You've got USBs in there. There's a cooler box in the center console and CarPlay runs wireless. So you might as well just go straight into the glove box, nice and easy. Then we've got this plug here. So this one's gonna grab the original plug from the touchscreen buttons that were there and plug it right in. And then that will go to the new screen. This will go to the original panel and also this original panel and they're just gonna get sat in behind the dash. So they get retained, but they need to go in this area, tucked away, hidden out of the way, okay? So get that done, get that done, that ready to plug in, and mount your three antennas, GPS, Wi-Fi, and microphone. You have to do all three, get them done. Um, I'll get them done now, and then we'll see how it looks. All right, bit of an update. Number one, we've put the mic in right up there. Number two, we've got the GPS antenna right there. And number three was a caravan camera. So that was a side little quest that we've done. So don't worry about that. And coming over here, we had this pulled out just a moment ago. And there's one plug and play connection behind that. Get that connection done. And then this can get plugged in and put back into its place. Then you'll have all this wiring here. So obviously we need to clean this up a little bit, but we've got the new power harness that's come up and through. We've got a plug and play portion that we've done there and those two side panels that were here before have been plugged in and put in behind here and zip tied in because they have to stay connected, okay? Um, so moving on, basically what will happen once this is all cleaned up, we can go and get our new screen that we put the original circuit board on, plug all of your original cables in, plug your new cable in, um, sit it in place, start doing some testing, which is what I'm going to do right now. So as I plug this in, guys, what am I looking for? I'm looking for keeping note of which one was my GPS antenna. That's this one here. So GPS antenna right there. I'm gonna make sure that that goes onto GPS. That was what I put in the A-pillar. Uh, the Wi-Fi antenna, which is the other antenna that you'll get in the kit. Okay, basically every single plug will have something, okay? So just make sure. Um, I'll let you know if there is any that are not there, mainly from the OEM side, from the board. Okay, there it is. We've got everything plugged in, ready to go. Before we put the car back together, I'm gonna go through, turn it on, test it. This is the stage that you will probably be at, so you just wanna make sure, number one, that it turns on with ignition. Okay, so that's really good. Check your touch screen works. Just go through and test a few features out, okay? A very important thing to check as well before you put it back together, car. Okay, so what you see here, not working. Original sound system's working, which is good. We can hear that. Turn it down so I don't catch copyright. So what happened with the screen not working is the screen parameters are wrong. This is another big part of this install you need to go through and check. So it's a resistive screen from original, pretty sure. So you need to go through and try that. So that's gonna now reboot again. Okay, so what you wanna do is go through here, screen parameter, and then play with them and click car. So you need to take a photo of what your original buttons looked like, and then you need to copy that here. So, you know, home, park, whatever was on the originals, make sure they're here, uh, copy that over play with the resolution. Obviously this is way off, so it's not working. If you hit car 
and it just reboots the whole system. That means the setting is wrong. So if you go to screen parameter and check. So for example, I've got resistive screen one and single view. And now I'm gonna go through and change these resolution settings here until we get it 100%. So I'll do that and I'll show you what it is. And if it matches your car, awesome. If not, you'll have to do that yourself. Um, don't forget to put this little panel back on, all that sort of stuff. And then you can pretty much reassemble the car. And that's what we're gonna do. And then I'll run you through the system. Okay, so that's the front pretty much back together. All you need to do now is that, put the rear back together, and that is the job completed. I'm gonna get that done, and then I'll give you a quick demo of that brand new Android 12 display. Here she is, finished product, looks amazing. It is so much better than what it was before. Uh, I just wanna come back to what we were talking about earlier. All the original stuff is working now. You can hear we've got feedback on our buttons, and the way we've done it, so you've got home settings, park camera and everything works uh, mode sound phone and navigation on the settings of the unit i'm on bosch engine capacitive screen single view key template six car four resolution three go ahead and try that if it works awesome if not you're gonna have to go ahead and change it yourself um, just wanted to show you carplay so open up that go to your phone Okay, Bluetooth, and then you will see the pairing name pop up in your Bluetooth list, which I've just found. So I'm gonna select it. Okay, the phone will connect to the unit. Perfect. Now it's gonna bring us into CarPlay. Keep your phone handy to select use CarPlay when it pops up, okay? That's very important. Uh, there's a setting here that we can do as well. I'll do that after. You saw that, guys. So quick, right into Apple CarPlay. Give it a sec. It's go, doing a Wi-Fi handover now, so once it does that handover, we'll have nice, fast, wireless CarPlay. Um, double check sound. Perfect. Fantastic sound quality. Little button here to go home. You can get out of it. Um, reverse, okay, brings your factory camera up and your 360 camera system. Get out of it, brings you right back to where you were. All apps, so in here you've got uh, DVR is what we set the customer's caravan to, but you've got all your Android settings. So if you want to go through, you want to set Wi-Fi networks, that sort of thing, play with sound and display settings, that's all there. Um, and if you've noticed, I've always just, there's a little soft button here that gets you home. So that's nice. Uh, navigation is gonna bring up Google Maps. Google Maps wants internet. So the reason I say that is because here in Android settings, you can go through and connect a hotspot through Wi-Fi. But what I would recommend is that SIM card that we put in the glove box, put a SIM in it. So that way you'll have wireless CarPlay all the time and you'll have internet. So you can go ahead and use Google Maps there if you want to, or if you don't want the internet at all, doesn't matter. Just go straight here and that's, that's using your phone data and you've got CarPlay. Um, so Google Maps right there. Waze Maps, Google Maps, Spotify, this is all the stuff that's compatible. Uh, Apple Maps, phone, music. Um, same thing, we can go here, home, get us out of there. Music and video, so the two USB ports that we've put into the glove box will run that. So if you put a USB or a hard drive in, you can go and access those files. I know some people still like to do that. Back to home. Uh, that will also do Android Auto, okay, and when you connect to Android, it will change. Open up, browser, right, YouTube, Google Maps, which is a shortcut to that navigation screen we looked at earlier. Google, Zlink 5, all right, there's a few things on there, not a lot, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. If you connect your Wi-Fi or put a SIM card in and you have internet, you can go to Google Play, and from Google Play, you can go crazy, you can download Netflix, Stan, KO Sports, all that stuff, it will all work on the car. Um, you can set it how you like as well, so if you want it to play while you're driving, uh, we don't recommend that, but you can do that. If you would rather it just turn off while you're driving, you can set that as well, it's completely up to you. But that's pretty much it. For me, daily driving, this is what I'm on every day. Basically, every day driving to and from work, going out to places, this is what you're going to use the most. This is where phone, is away, don't touch the phone, right? Police won't get you for touching your phone, but you basically have your phone right there and you're allowed to touch this screen. 
So you can go to Spotify, you can go to Google, you can do this. Hey Siri, take me to Westfield Southland. There you go, didn't even touch it. See that? If you don't touch it, it will automatically start guiding you and you turn the volume up. Well, yeah, when Siri talks, if you have it on, I don't have it on, I've got only alerts. But here, if you turn sound up, you can hear all your alerts. There you go. Same. Right, there you go, as you heard. Um, and then same as Siri. Hey Siri, what's the weather like today? Expect some clear skies today. Daytime temperatures will hover around 31 degrees with overnight lows around 16. Okay, no worries. So... Not easy to work with. <laughs> there you go. So, that is pretty much it. That is the system installed, set and done. And there it is guys, 2016 Range Rover Sport with our brand new 10.25 inch display. Fantastic display, it is a massive upgrade to what is there currently as that system's completely dated now. Uh, it is a very big job as you would have seen from the video. I tried to be as transparent and show everything that I can just so people really get a grip of how hard this is. I've been at it three quarters of the day just on this install, so big job, okay? Um, However, you can do it. Right? I don't want to steer people away from DIY. You can do the job, it's just a big one. So allow a day, maybe a weekend for it and take your time with it and it will work. If you want to reach out to us, www.shoptfb.com. Anything you need is there. The screen will be linked in the first link in the description, but it will also be on Shop TFB if you want that exact screen. Any other normal basic questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm not that good at replying to comments, but I will try, I promise. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Anything else, just comment down below or hit the, go to the website. Anything else, go to the website, fill out the contact form, reach out to us. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you in the next one.